क्या उसके साथ इसके साथ आदेश राजेश ने किया आदेश आदेश अच्छा आदेश ने किया है ये आदेश कौन है जो घर में है परिवार में अच्छा आपके परिवार में है वो आदेश ने किया है ये तो आप इसका सर क्यों लेकर आ रहे हैं इसको मैंने 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 काट डाला वो हमारा कुछ मिला नहीं तो दोनों को निपटा देते हैं अच्छा अच्छा तो कि, किस वजह से किया है आपने इस तरह से इसका रिहायशवाजी करता है सर हमने हमने देख लिया अच्छा हमने इसको हमने चलो आज दो दिन होगा हमने दो दिन में In Iran, where the legal age of marriage is 13, Mona Hidari was forced to marry her cousin at the age of 12. During the five years that they were married, Mona was physically, verbally, and sexually abused. When Mona found out that her three-year-old child was also being sexually abused, she tried to escape to Turkey. She hoped to start a new life for her and her child in Turkey, but she was alone, had no means of job, and was really scared. After some time being there, she had contacted her brother to see about coming back. And her brother assured her that she would be safe, that nothing would happen to her. So her brother and her father went to get her in Turkey. She returned home, and her family was happy to have her home. Her husband even appeared to be happy that she was home. But a few days later, Sejad and his brother tied her hands and feet and beheaded her. Mona's headless body was wrapped in a blanket and thrown away by Sajad's brother. Sajad took Mona's head in his hand and walked down the street with a knife in his other. In the video, her husband can be seen grinning as he's holding the knife in one and carrying his wife's decapitated head in the other. Many people in Iran were really shocked at the incident, but not surprised. Her father, Javad, justified his decision to push his daughter to marry at such a young age after her death, saying that she had reportedly fled the domestic abuse and that was normal. He also stated that the husband had put forth a lot of effort to support his young wife. According to Sajad's father, he was a good husband he worked hard and gave her the best life. Mona's father was stated that she wasn't forced to marry. In fact, the husband had provided her with the very best of lives. He's also said, It's true, there was fighting between them and sometimes there was violence, and she would return home, but she only stayed for two or three days, and then he would pick her up, and life would return to normal. These fights between husband and wife are completely normal, and I don't think there was a problem as she didn't ask for a divorce. He did agree, however, that she was probably too young to marry. He added, We got a certificate of confirmation that she was physically old enough to marry, and there were not any physical problems with the relationship. On the other hand, the family alleged that the husband had been mocked and insulted since his wife had fled to Turkey, allegedly with another man. Most honor killings occur in countries where the concept of a woman is collateral or property. But the United Nations Commission on Human Rights says that honor killings have occurred in a lot more places. Bangladesh, Great Britain, Brazil, Ecuador, Egypt, India, Israel, Italy, Jordan, Pakistan, Morocco, Sweden, Turkey, and Uganda. But the sad thing about this is that this is not an isolated incident. Mona is not the only story of honor killings in this area. Ramina Ashrafi ran away from home with her 35-year-old boyfriend after her father had found them out and completely objected to their marriage. The pair were found by police and Ramina told the police that she was in danger if she had went home, that her life was threatened. Later that night, she was attacked by her father in her bedroom. It's reported that Ramina's father 
beheaded her while she was asleep with a sickle. He then immediately confessed, still holding the bloody sickle. He's been arrested, and he'll face a reduced sentence if convicted. In Iran, the punishment for honor killings is reduced. The maximum sentence it carries is about 10 years, rather than the death sentence or payment of blood money. Romina's 35-year-old boyfriend also is serving two years in prison for taking her to elope with him. When I started investigating this story, I really thought that it was going to be covering a young girl's murder. Young girls are murdered all the time. But in this instance, the more that I researched it, the more that I saw these women are oppressed in a way that their lives are in danger every day. Mona was literally trying to escape her abusive husband. And for that, she was murdered by her own blood, her own family. While it may not have been her father and her brother who slid the knife across her throat, they went and got her to bring her back to a man that they knew was abusing her. Her brother also reassured her that she would be safe and that they would take care of her. <laughs>